What's up guys, Doug Polk here and we're back with another episode of Poker Hands and today we're going to be taking a look at a hand that was one of the most pivotal hands from the 2018 World Series of Poker main event covered by Poker Go. But before we jump into it, I want to let you know I've been streaming video games over on Twitch. If you want to stop by, I'll stream most days at 5 o'clock Pacific time. See you over there. Alright, let's go ahead and jump into the action. Poker gods are back on your side because... When they're against you, there is nothing you can do. And Sin is realizing this as well, and he's just going to keep the heat on right now. Oh. Just calls with 7-5. And this hand opens with Sin with more than a 2-1 to one chip lead. The footage that we have of this hand actually begins at the flop, but it's pretty easy to, to decipher what happened here pre-flop. Given that the pod is a little over 10 million and the big blind is 2 million, I'm going to assume that the button opened to two and a half blinds and the big blind called. This is pretty standard play uh, with any hand you'd want to play on the button and with any hand that you obviously want to play but don't want to 3-bet in the big blind. As for the hands they decided to play with, while these are two pretty weak hands, I actually don't mind this play from either of them. In the small blind, the 6-4 offsuit open, uh, it'll be a negative EV open against really tough big blinds, but in general, especially with an ante, if you're not getting 3-bit a lot and maybe your opponent's putting in a few more folds than they possibly should, then I don't mind the play. It is worth noting if your opponent's playing really aggressive in the big blind, I don't like this play and I'd probably just let it go pre-flop. Facing an open in the big blind with 7-5, definitely a standard call. And one of the things that I did as a heads-up player, I looked through all of my database at these kinds of hands calling. And what I found was they did a lot better than even some of the much stronger hands in terms of showdown value, like maybe King Deuce or Queen 5 offsuit. They did a lot better than those hands. And I assume it's because they have much better playability post-flop. You're more likely to flop draws you can bluff with or make big hands rather than just having weak pairs and or completely nothing. So I like these decisions pre-flop. Let's go ahead and take a look at the flop. Sin hits that flop with the four. Malice has a gut shot. And this is... This is like an MMA match where Sin has his opponent on the canvas and just will not let him up. No, I mean, when you're the chip leader, you have to just keep hammering away, putting max pressure on your opponent. Oh. Wow, it's not Tony six. Smiles right now. Sin decides to get it going here on the flop by betting 4.5 million with his middle pair middle kicker. Now, this is kind of an interesting spot. I think in general, you should lean towards a check here. You have kind of a middling hand. Uh, if you do get raised, you're going to be in a really tough situation with your mid pair. This is the kind of hand you want to check back and look to play some turns. Now, it's okay every now and then to bet your middle pair because if your opponent does have a hand like two over cards to the board, or rather to the four and the three on the board, he's going to have a lot of equity against you. So I don't mind maybe mixing in a bet every now and then, but generally speaking, I prefer a check. I also prefer a check with a middling four like this one where you do have some turns you could easily call a bet on and probably rivers as well. You can pick up a straight draw on a bunch of different turns. But in general, this hand should be a check. I don't mind once in a while going ahead and betting. Now over to Miles with the 7-5. This is a bit of an interesting spot now, too. This is one of those spots where you should probably be mixing in two different plays. And I know you guys don't like it, but that's the way that poker works. When you have a gutter like this in this spot, you would generally prefer to raise. Why is that? It's because you can win the hand right now, or you can improve to the nuts and try and get some value in later streets, or you can either give up or even run it. So you have a lot of options when you raise and a lot of different ways to win the pot. However, if Miles decides to raise every time he has a gut shot here, he's going to raise too, way too much. Think about all the straight draws he could possibly have. Ace-deuce, ace-five, six-deuce suited, five-deuce suited, certainly an open-ender, but still a hand he could raise. Six-five, seven-five, seven-six, some diamond hands, maybe some heart hands. This is way, 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 way too many bluffs. So even though we would generally prefer to raise seven-five, I would work in a healthy portion of calls. So it's tough to know what someone's overall game plan is because we only get to see one hand. But as long as he's working in a decent amount of check calling, I'm cool with putting in some check raises as well. Miles does decide to check call, and let's take a turn. How about a paired board? 
and still good. Still good. His opponent did check, call the flop out of position, right? So you might want to give him credit for a jack or a three at this point. I might, consider, test him. I might consider checking back the fork, controlling the size of the pot here. Sin is going to test him. He wants to increase that chip lead, if at all possible. He's got some read that Tony is kind of spinning off in some zone now that is not going to create good poker decisions. Tony looks like he doesn't want to give up, but what can he possibly do here? He called the flop. His opponent continues firing. He can't call again. I mean, his only option is the check raise, and I just don't see that happening. If so, he's essentially trying to represent the three. He did call the flop, so I guess it wouldn't be the worst spot. I just, I just don't think he's going to do it. Notice the breathing getting a little bit deeper. You can actually see his breaths. Now his he's chest struggling. moving up and down. Definitely struggling. Looks like he wants to raise. And this is one of the potential problems you run into when you bet your four on the turn. When you get check raised, it's really such a gross spot. But really, the only hand he's representing now is a three. Right? He's not doing this with a jack. He's not doing it with a four. So he's essentially telling Sin, hey, I have a three in my hand. Do you want to continue? Let's go. And that's it. What's that old rock song? No more Mr. Nice Guy? Sin is a non-believer. Look at this guy. Wow, what a great call. My goodness. Sin senses an opportunity here. The turn comes in off to three pairing the board, and this is a spot where Miles can certainly look to develop a lead range. The reason is simple. If he has a three in the big blind, he did call preflop, well, he's almost always going to want to check call those hands on the flop, or then maybe some occasional hands like ace three of diamonds and a few other strong uh, pair plus flush route type hands. But in general, he's going to look to check call. Also on the button, when Sin has a three, he's going to be doing a lot of checking back. So in general, this is a spot where you want to look to either lead a lot of hands for a small size, or maybe lead some bluffs like some straight draws and some trips and look to check the middle of your range. I don't want to get too far into that because he does decide to check here on the turn. I just want you guys to know that these are certainly options in your playbook that you should be looking to put into your moves when you're in the big blind. Anyway, Miles does check over to Sin and now he has to decide what to do. The action's now on Sin, and he has a crystal clear check. It doesn't get more clear than this. First off, if you do bet with middle pair, what are you planning on doing against aggression? And then what are you hoping to get calls by? Maybe some flush draws or some ace highs? All of those hands might just fold there in the turn, or if they do decide to continue, they're going to raise. I don't see much merit to betting here almost at all. This is a turn where your opponent should have a bunch of strong hands, and I don't really see much of a desire to bet here. If you were going to bet a four and I probably wouldn't bet a four, but you'd want to pick a four that doesn't block some of the potential bluffs. Like, oh, I don't know. Let's say you don't want to bet a four with a five or a six in your hand or a seven in your hand, because now your opponent's even more likely to have you beat. I do not like this bet. Don't do this at home. And even though it's a very small bet size, this is just a spot to check it back, play some pot control, and decide in the river. After thinking over his options, Miles decides to put in a check raise. Now let's think about the kinds of hands he's representing. He's really saying that he has a three, maybe a boat that once in a while didn't check raise the flop, but realistically he's saying, hey, I have a three and I didn't lead. And this is where it's really important to think back to what I talked about earlier on the turn. If you're gonna lead a lot of your threes, you can't make this move very often. But if you're gonna check all your hands, it's fine to do so. Given that he didn't lead with a very weak hand, I think it's safe to say Miles might not be leading anything, in which case this makes this play, it makes this play a lot better. But do we like the bluff with this hand? Obviously, Miles should have some bluffs here. He could certainly have a hand with a three in it, but what kinds of hands should Miles be choosing? Well, for starters, I would prefer to not have a hand with a five, six, or seven in it. 
Why does that matter? It matters because it makes it more likely that Sin is bluffing. He has a hand like 7-5, 6-5, those types of hands that could be betting, uh, betting here on the turn. When you have a 5, it's a little less likely now that he's bluffing. So some of the best possible bluff candidates here are maybe a hand like Ace-Deuce. The reason I like that hand a lot is because I think Ace-3 is one of the most likely 3s to bet the flop. And then additionally, you don't block any of those possible bluff cards your opponent could be using. Yeah, it's possible Sin has 6-Deuce suited or Ace-Deuce himself, but those hands are a little less likely compared to all of the different 6-5, 7-5s five, um, and and seven sixes here on the turn. So I know it's a small thing, but once you're representing very specific hands, I'd prefer to see some of those other holdings. It's also worth noting, I'd probably prefer not to have a diamond because I want to make sure my opponent is more likely to have some kind of draw themselves. So overall, I think with this hand in Miles' shoes, I would probably just fold. If once in a blue moon you want to make a move and get in the mix with this hand, I don't hate that, obviously. I think that's an okay play. And in general, leaning towards being a bit more aggressive is, in my opinion, better than being a bit too passive. But I just don't think that this hand is the best candidate that he can choose. He blocks two of the major straight draws, uh, or two, both of his cards block major straight draws, also blocks the flush draw. I just don't think this is the best possible candidate that he has to raise. Anyway, Miles disagrees, and maybe he thinks Sin's just betting something a little too thin or betting with a little too much air, and he does decide to check raise it up. Action back over to Sin. This is why you check the turn. But anyway, he now has a very clear fold. The reason is that this is his absolute worst possible value bet. He doesn't have pairs that are worse than this, and then he also blocks a bunch of the potential bluff candidates. This is an easy fold. You just let it go. All right, guys, I'll see you again next week. What? Wait, what? He called? Oh, God. Maybe he has a three. Third diamond. It's a king. It's actually a pretty good bluff card for Tony Miles. He could have done this with a flush draw and gotten there on the river. Will he fire again? There's 60 million out there. He hasn't done this all tournament that I've seen where he's put it all in on the river for a bluff. Yeah. Oh my gosh, and he does it. He does it. He and does now, it. now, with the shove, John Sin with an amazing uh, opportunity. But how could he call this here? It's a very difficult call. That's an extremely difficult card on the river to call with. I can't imagine he's able to sniff this out. He might be able to sniff it out, but does he actually have what it takes to make the call? This would be one of the greatest calls I've ever seen. And it would give John Sin this title. Imagine being Tony Miles right now, sitting there while your opponent is thinking about it, and you have seven high. And you, you wondered a little bit about Tony Miles' chops. He had the guts on the turn with that big raise and got called, and then to shove here? Well, if you make that play on the turn, you have to go for it on the river, right? You can't just give it up. There's just too much out there. Go for it without shoving everything. That's I mean, just remarkable. He's really trying to sell it. I mean, Sorry, what an amazingly courageous bet by Tony Miles. Whether it works or not, you have to give him so much credit. I mean, Norman Chad, you could never, ever pull this off in a million years. You just don't have what it takes. Not in two million years. I, I'm stunned that he could make that move. And I'll be even more stunned if Johnson can sniff it out, make the call, and win this main event title. It's on his plate right now in front of him for Johnson. Yeah, sounds easy. Make the call, become a world champion. Why did I not just check the turn? The river comes the king of diamonds, and if you're Miles, you gotta bluff this card. If you decide to check raise that turn with a hand with a diamond in it, which you should be a little less likely to do, you're gonna wanna represent that hand on the river because now the flush gets in. If your opponent has a hand like top pair, or an over pair, or uh, trips, any of these hands, you're now in the lead and you'd want a value bet, and he's less likely to have a flush. This is the moment where, regardless of how big the stage is, and maybe the turn check raise was a little questionable in terms of how often he should be making this bluff, if you get to this spot, you gotta put your foot in the gas and put your opponent in a critically tough spot. I gotta give it up to Miles. It was a little aggressive on the turn, but this play is working out beautifully. And this is the kind of move you might wanna play against someone who bets the turn a little too often. 
One thing that when I played heads up, I tried to incorporate into my game is if I face someone who bet a street too often, I check raise them more. Maybe that's what Miles has decided here. This hand's a little loose on the turn check raise um, if you do it too often, but if his opponent starts betting a four, well, all of a sudden he's gonna get put in really shitty spots like this one, and now he's gonna be up the creek without a paddle. Over to Sin, and this looks like a crystal clear fold. First off, having the six that's not a diamond is an even worse card now. That's one you really want him to have to be bluffing with. On top of it, you have no diamond. You have way, way, way better hands in your range. This is one of your worst made hands in your range. I mean, simply speaking, what better hands does he have to fold? Six, five, five deuce suited? Not many hands at all. This is a no brainer fold. But this is the thing about the WSOP main event. People came to play, and you're only going to get this instance once. So what does the long run matter if you have a read? Sometimes you got to put your foot down, and you got to realize that your opponent is trying to punk you, and you're not going to stand for it. Well, that's a good sign for Tony Miles. Can Johnson make the call of a lifetime? <sighs> he can't. He just can't. Johnson has a pair of fours. It's so hard to call your entire tournament stack on the river when someone has moved in on you. Look at the composure on Tony Miles. What a beast. Kudos to you, Tony Miles. All right. I think if you're... If you're, if you're sick enough to pull this bluff off, I think I just have to let you have it. I don't have a very good hand at all. I just, I'm just confused. His spidey sense says. Can be like straight draws. Something's not right. Well, the question is, even if he makes his flush, is he really going to shove so much on a paired board? Right, You're so that's going through Sin's mind. About the hand, yeah. I mean, you have to be slightly nervous about the paired board on them. His radar is working. Uh, I'm about to call the clock on myself. I mean, I, I just, I don't think I'm calling. He's back in it. What a bluff shot. What a moment for Tony Miles. All right, well, the guy still won the main. Who's to judge? Just want to let you guys know I will be streaming some bankroll challenge over on Twitch. I'll put a link in the description below, and I'll see you there.